I waited about two months for this to arrive. Ah, I couldn't wait for a postbag video, so I opened it straight away. Well, here we have it. It arrived, and this is a very fast unpacking. Oh, there it is, unpacked, and it's sitting in its box. So, what do you get for your money? We'll open the box and find out. Here we go. So that background noise, windows open, it's hot. And there it is. There's the Picket 4, ICD and debugger. And the money, you get a new USB lead and a couple of stickers. Right, here we are with the MP Lab program open. And we want to start a new project, so it's on new projects. And we want a standalone project, it's embedded system. Right, we want to pick the family, the like family is the AVR, and we want the AT Tiny 85, which is down there somewhere. Just going to find it, here we go, there we go. Now we want to select the picket, picket 4, that's what we want, and we want to use a C compiler, so we'll finish that. Right, now we need to find somewhere to put it. So we're in our test location so we'll do it in here we'll call it blink notice that the b is too close to the end for my fingers you'll see this a lot in this video let me open that file that directory sorry here we go and we'll give the project a name and we'll spell it wrong again and then we finish Now uh, the project has been created and set as the main project, which is close test out of the way. And what we want to do is we get the source files and we want to add old file. So if that's a new one, and we'll use a C program just for the start. And it's the main one. And so we'll give it a name once we press next. And again, we will probably spell blink with a B. Yep. Too close together those keys. And then we hit the the finish button and it will create the main file for us. We need to add the include for the XC compiler, which is xc.h. We'll get there eventually. Little uh, dancing around here, trying to work out where the X on the, cal on the keyboard is. Oh, found it, there we go. And then for time, for delays, we need to have an in, a built-in function for a delay. So we'll just add that to the bottom. See, there is some help and bits that they need to pop up when you don't want them. But uh, it's getting better. Right, so now we want to include an AVR function to, to allow us to have a quick delay, which we'll have a delay with Blinky. Eventually we'll get there. AVR slash built-ins. We'll get there. Here it comes slowly. Oh, I'll take the mic out myself typing. There we go. Built-ins. Top one. Oh, that's, that. that's it. Got it. And there we go. So first things first, we need to Take the direction register B, we need to set that up so the port knows what it's going to do. So we are going to make all inputs apart from one. So we are going to set PB0 as an output. Right, we need a loop. So do a while one a while true, never ending loop. And we are gonna set port B equal to low PB zero low. Right, for a delay, we've used this include here. This is a, this is a rather long winded delay. 
So built-in function, the AVR, and it's in process of cycles. If I spell it right, it would be different. And we've got the clock at the moment. It's an eight meg internal clock and it's divided by eight. So the instruction cycles are one megahertz or a million for a second. So half a second would be 500,000. So that's now 500 millisecond delay. I said it would be better if I put the bits in. Very simple we're doing. We're going to set the port B equal to a 1. So we're going to set it high. BD0 high. And it's going to loop around. And I'll just bring in the uh, other camera. Bear with me while I do this. Right. There's, There's your camera. camera. And there we, we can, can see the Kit 4. There's an 80 tiny 85 on there and just some breakout bits for it. Uh, the little LED with a resistor that's hung off BD0. So what we're going to do now is we're going to hit, we could do a build and that's built successfully. What we're going to do now is we're going to make and program the device. So we hit it again and down the bottom it will tell you what it's doing. It's connected to the program and that's it programmed all done very quickly. Now I remove the power, cycle the power. Nothing. Ah, what a, what a silly me. It's going to do that so fast we are not going to see it. So you don't want to spot the mistake. We needed a second delay. Right, we'll program it again. As you can see, you can program it because it don't take long at all. Click the programmer, bang, done. And there you go, success. It was, of course, going high, but one microsecond later, it went low. So we can see it. Now you may ask, you know, why are we bothering with this? What can this do? Why am I spending a lot more money? You know, 50 odd quid or is on a picket four to do this. Well, when it comes to fault finding and, you know, you're on your AVR, you have to type in, you know, serial.print and then the variable you want and then format it and, you know, it takes time and it's using up your memory and it's also using up your time between processes. So if you're doing something fast, it just gets in the way. Whereas with this, up here, yeah, we'll pop up in a minute, debug main project. Now if I hit on that, you'll see it will connect to the board again and to the programmer. And what you'll notice now is we have a high speed flash. It's still flashing away and it's still running. But you'll notice up here we have a stop or finish. We have a pause. Hit the pause and it stops running. Hit the continue button. It starts running again. But the more important thing is we can pause it and we can put breakpoints. So now when I run it, it stopped at this breakpoint. And the more important thing is if I hover the cursor over port B, it will tell me that the value of port B is zero. Now if I run it again, it's going to go through that command, load port B equal one, go through the delay and stop up here. 
is done. I hover down here now, and you can see port B now contains one. Now, how good is that? None of this print F. What is the contents of port B? You know, I can just stop the program, hover over there, and there's the value. And if, it, if I want to change the uh, configuration bits, I can come down here and there is all the configuration bits and you can set them and reset them and clear them to your heart's content. So I hope this has been in use. And if you like it, please subscribe and hit the bell button. And uh, I'll be back with some more examples of what you can do with an AT Tiny 85 and the Picket 4 and the NP Lab IDE. I hope this has whetted your appetite. Thanks for watching.